I had this on the internet showing how this hopper for the Harbor Freight chipper shredder worked, especially when you're moving large amounts of leaves. And a lady contacted me and asked whether or not I'd make one of these to ship it, which I'm not really ready, but I did say that I would tell how I made this. And if you're handy with woodworking, I think this is pretty easy to go together. The materials used for it is uh, exterior grade half inch plywood and two by fours and a lot of screws, uh, number eight type one and a quarter inch wood screws. The way this thing goes together generally is, is I've used the plywood on the top and I've made a couple of support pieces underneath it and then on the back here this is reinforced with a spline up each side to kind of hold it together. It's pretty rigid. Um, it sits inside, if you could come forward and kind of shine down in here, it sits inside this where it hooks to the handle at the front and then just sort of drops into the hopper, the existing part, and sits around the edges of it. So what we built this out of is we take some 2x4 and we put a 30 degree um, cut on this thing so that this gives something for the plywood to screw into on the top. So this is the cross section of the 2x4 I use, so it's typical here with a 30 degree angle on it. And that's where the, the uh, hopper body sits up on top of that. And we make a frame with this 2x4 to sit on the top of this lip of the Harbor Freight and then cut a 45 on it so that you essentially have got a miter cut into the corner. But once this frame is made around the top, the weight of the hopper is resting on the top of the, of the chipper shred. I mentioned about how this is mitered into this corner, and so I brought two fairly long wood screws in from the side to tie that together, and again on the other corner over here. This photo was taken when I was building the hopper. You can see in the picture that I've screwed a piece of plywood to the inside edge of each of the partial 2x4s. These two pieces of plywood slide down into the hopper opening and rest against the inside surfaces of the shredder bin. I put two panels on the inside of this to sit against the inside wall of the uh, Harbor Freight metal hopper. That keeps it from flopping around. But also, if you'll come around here, Joe, and point in this area, you'll see that I hook the wood underneath this handle, which keeps this from falling over backwards. Um, I'm out. Pull back a little bit so you can see the whole thing. I'm going to show that when we assemble this thing and put it on the hopper, essentially what we're doing is we're pushing that into that and then just letting the back drop down in place. It flops in there, it's resting around the sides, it's held by that hook and it holds everything together. These side panels can be cut. They, I'd suggest probably doing this trial and error so that you can make sure that this is a kind of a snug fit on the groove here. Uh, you'll need some clearance in the back so it doesn't hit the back side of the hopper here. And you just put screws into the side into those 30 degree angle wooden posts that later we're gonna put this panel on and tie it down. So you build all that up down there ahead of time and then we'll put the panels on the side. And the rear, I hang the partial two by four board that has the 30 degree angle on it so it hangs off the shredder rather than sit on the top lip of the shredder like I've done on the side. Okay, for the size of the plywood sheets, um, we take a strip, a long strip, that's 20 and a quarter inches wide. And then for this back sheet on the hopper, at the short end of it, it's 14 and a quarter inches to the point here. And at the long end on the top, it's 47 inches from end to end here. Okay, for the side sheets, we've still got the same 20 and a quarter inch width this way. But now from this corner here, to a straight vertical edge is 20 and a quarter inches, and then at this corner at this end is 36 and 5 inch inches over from the straight surface on this end. Okay, so the, when we get done, we're going to have screws all along this surface going into the 30 degree angle 2 by 4s and then all the way up these two joints that tie the sheets together, and they're going into a structural piece on the back, which is, is the spline that we mentioned. These are a couple splines that I made on the side of these, and I'll show you in a moment what that's like. Stop. So as these two boards come together at an angle, we have to match that angle on this reinforcing board that we just showed the other side that all the screws are going to go down into. And the angle that it takes in here between these is 21 and a half degrees from horizontal coming up. 
And I'm going to show in a minute how we make that on a radial arm saw, and I think it can be done on a table saw too. To make the angles on the pieces of 2x4, um, I started off with a radial arm saw, and I used it to first rip the 2x4s in half. So instead of having a three and a half by one and a half piece, I had a one and a half piece by one and three quarters piece of wood. Then I took that piece and I set the radial arm saw up so that I could cut a, a V groove in the thing, which ended up with our, uh, what I showed earlier was a 21 and a half degree angle on each side, and this is what I was after. So you see the radial arm saw is what I've done is I've tilted the blade up 21 and a half degrees from horizontal. So we're going to rotate the head around so that's pointed to the rear and we'll tighten that up, lock the thing. So I don't exactly have a piece of rip 2x4 but I do have the stake about the same size. As you can see I've got the blade at the tilt as we showed it earlier and lowered down so that the uh, right at the outer edge it would just touch the wood and then it would cut a groove down to the middle and lined it up so it cuts halfway through. So I would rip the board by pushing it through the blade at this end. By the way, make sure everything's locked in terms of the position on the blade. Push it through, rip it through, then turn the piece around, rip it through the other side and you'd end up with a V groove with the 21 and a half angle on both sides that we need for making the splines that hold the uh, bin together. What we want to do next is we want to mount these uh, spline boards, uh, they're actually just structural boards on the back where I've cut those two 21 and a half degree V on the underside of that. But now we have to install these on the sides here because one person is going to have to hold these boards up on the side and the other person's going to have to drill them in. So again, that would be the time where you put this in to fill in that little space so stuff doesn't accumulate there. Um, I want to mention one other thing. There's a, you may have seen me in the video where it was running. I was using this to stir the material down into the groove so you don't get your hands down there. A good thing to use for this thing is called medium density fiberboard. And it's a manufactured product probably made out of sawdust. And you can get moldings like this at Menards. They just call it MDF. It's a good thing to use because if it does get away from you and fall in and it hits the shredder on there, it just chips this wood up. It's not very strong. And so it doesn't hurt the shredder if it happens to fall in. Not nearly as bad as if you dropped a piece of hardboard in or something along those lines. So what we've got here is uh, when we're all done with it, I've got it so it's stored up in the garage. And I just drilled a couple of holes up at the top up there and just lift this up on top of it and it'll hang there nicely. I did find it to be smart to put a couple of pieces of styrofoam on the bottom here because I kept hitting my head on it earlier and getting myself cut up. So that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, uh, throw them on the YouTube site if there's anything that I forgot to get the necessary information out. Now finally what I want to say about this is of course the video that we've made is copyrighted. I don't consider the design here as being so novel as to be patentable, but I do claim copyright on the design. So if you were the, wanted to make one of these for yourself, that's perfectly all right. That's fair use. If you like the design and decided to go into production with it and sell it to someone else, since it is copyrighted, you'll want to get in touch with me and we'll work out some kind of licensing arrangement on that.